And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and to everybody on YouTube who's watching this one later on for some Sultai mid-range. Um, all right, so we're uh, playing a, a new deck here. This is a donation deck. That's what the two Ds next to the deck list name mean. Um, where we're going to be playing uh, so kind of a hodgepodge of good Sultai cards. So kind of like Sultai good stuff, I guess you could kind of call this deck. And you can see we're trying to, uh, like we have 26 lands, so we're trying to hit our land drops and trying to uh, ramp early with the help of Leafkin Druid, Paradise Druid. So we've got our two mana Druids, Risen Reefs as well, um, to help hit our land drops. Um, Midnight Reaper is a really good creature at hitting land drops as well, because whenever you play it, people want to kill it right away, and you get to draw an extra card. Or, you know, of course, obviously, if you ha uh, have any of your mana creatures or Risen Reefs or anything die, you get to draw some extra cards. So you can hit your land drops. We got Death Sprout that ramps us a little bit as well. Um, then, and we're trying to get to like our five mana, five and six mana cards. At five mana, we got all these elementals, Cavalier of Knights, Thorns, and your rock um, in here to go along with the Risen Reefs to help get us extra cards to trigger Risen Reef. Plus, they're just really good five drops, including a Cavalier of Thorns ramping us. And then our top end, what this deck's kind of all about, is Casualties of War. We got three of them in the main deck, another in the sideboard. So we're trying to get to our six mana, start casting Casualties of War, blow up a whole bunch of stuff on our opponent's side of the battlefield. Um, you know, blow up two, three, four permanents. And just really kind of put the game away after doing that once or twice. Um, we have a Tamiyo that can rebuy Casualties of War as well to be able to reuse it. Um, Casualties of War is just a really good card in standard right now with these uh, different um, uh, with these different uh, artifact and enchantment decks that are playing you know, like Witch's Oven and Trail of Crumbs and Fires of Invention and, and all of these kind of stuff. Um, of course, also top end, we got Hydro Crisis, the Great Henge. Uh, if things die, which they will be dying, we got Fine to bring them back. Or if we're playing against Aggro, we can be like ramping up to f finality. So we have a sweeper in the main deck there. And of course, Golgari Queen is just a really good Planeswalker at destroying some of those um, hard to deal with permanents that are lower, that are um, pretty low costed. So our deck kind of has a, a good amount of everything there. Um, all right, so so that's what our deck's all about. Let's give it a shot. Our our uh, sideboard, as you can tell, has some counter magic for control decks. Same with discard over there, and then a whole lot of removal, uh, different removal options for different um, creature decks. So we can kind of tune our deck to whatever they are doing. A couple shifting ceratops help against blue eye control. Don't have to worry about it getting countered, or like you know flash strategies. Don't have to worry about it getting countered. And it has haste and everything like that. So that's our going with this over Questing Beast. Because uh, we really want it for those decks with a bunch of counter spells. So let's give this a try. Um, so just like always with uh, donation decks, we're going to be playing them here in this um, traditional constructed league uh, it's standard league where you play until you win either five matches or lose two, whichever happens first. Yeah, Henge is definitely better now without Oko, that's for sure. Yeah, that means, so H means it's a historic deck. The two Ds mean it's a donation deck, a, a deck submitted by um, a viewer. And R means that you're that we're going to be playing it in ranked. For historic, for playing best of three in historic, we the only option is playing it in ranked. All right, so we'll start with Fable Passage. Go grab Forest. Check that. Start with Temple. I don't really mind keeping the two lander in this deck. Um, because you know, we do have the 26 lands, so as it, you know, we, we immediately drew a really good land there with that temple as well.
Would really, really like another untapped land to be able to Death Sprout this next turn. That would be really nice. Mono G. They're probably Gruel. Maybe they're Mono G. Guess we would have needed needed a black source though too. This doesn't look so great here. Hey, Azraleth. Or Azraleth. Welcome. Ah, it's Golgari. Hey, thank you so much, JRC. JRC gifting out the subs. So that's going to be, uh, it says it says we have seven, so we're just going to go seven. So we have seven subs on the day now today. All right, so our mana hurt us quite a bit with all the top lands opponent with all the basics got to play their spells a little easier than we did but we know we're going to need more cheap removal I don't know I kind of like all the stuff that we got going on here actually now they're really looking at it we don't need the fourth casualties because I mean these are good against like like what are the cards that my opponent played? Thanks, Jersey. <laughs> yeah, finally finally got a haircut. Been meaning to get one for a few weeks. Finally got one earlier today. Hmm. I'm not sure how many planeswalkers they're going to have. I do have all these casualties though too. I'm going to cut a murderous rider. Costs double black, you know, costs us two life. I just brought in a, a bunch of other good quality removal. <laughs> oh yeah, that Yeah, that one's always wrong. Gov says every time that I get my hair cut, my boss says I see you got your ears lowered, and it annoys me. Yeah, like that's, uh, yeah, I've heard that one quite a bit before. I mean that that gives dad jokes a bad name. I like dad jokes, so that it has to be, um, you know, be a little witty or something. That's. <laughs> you learned that expression from an episode of Doug. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's not a dad joke. That's a grandpa joke. Yeah, there you go. From the 
the smallest ant to the largest hydra, nature is beautiful. Well, hopefully they don't have too many more planeswalkers. We had the first one covered. I'd get out of the way if I were you. You don't have to tell me what to do. Hmm. I guess Growth Chamber Guardian would have been a good card to Legion's End instead. That hurt, so they drew the the land there to be able to Growth Chamber Guardian be able to do that before I could exile it or anything else. So I could let them play Hmm. Actually, I think I have a plan here. So they're going to play the Great Henge, and I'm just going to let them. I'm going to exile that thing. Basically letting them play the Great Henge before I play my casualties. Um, they can, of course, re-grab the Growth Chamber Guardian, though. Rude. Okay. Casualties of War looking good. Do I take out Risen Reef on the draw? Let's see, maybe I'm supposed to be doing that. Play this trophy, Death Sprout, Rider. Playing a gate instead of trophy. I don't really like Assassin's Trophy. Play another Casualties. Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, I was thinking the negate would counter find finality too. You know, you could be able to counter find or great henge or Vivian. I guess I got two slots, don't I? Yeah, stroke does counter questing beast.
So it also counter removal though, like Murderous Rider. All right, I'll play a trophy. I'll play a negate trophy. The first piece of my new computer came in today. I don't know exactly which piece, but got the first package in today. So that's the good news. The bad news, though, is I have two packages coming from Amazon. I guess it's split it into two packages, and one of them says it's like coming tomorrow, but then the other one is coming on Tuesday, it says. Which it looks like everything's going to be in like tomorrow or Friday, except for one thing comes in on Tuesday. And that one thing being the the outside shell of the computer. I don't know what the case. I guess you probably call it a case. That seems like a, a word you'd use. The computer case. Hmm. Yeah, the mana creature. Yeah, that's true. The O3s lose value with no Risen Reef. But I mean, I, I still think we need them. I still think we want the acceleration with them. Called a, a chasey, chases. <laughs> Why can't I kill you, Paradise Druid? That hexproof. Where are all these Karns Bastions come from? That's not the best sequencing. No, no brawl today. Um, all right, so I think I need to swift end the voracious Hydra. So they don't get to play the Great Henge. I really hope they don't just draw another land here. So they do, they get to play the Growth Chamber Guardian and uh, they did. And activate. And now they have the Grey Henge for the next turn. Whoa. That was not what I was expecting. I guess they're going to just play the Grey Henge the next turn. I don't have any interaction for the Great Henge. I can't kill this Pelt Collector. This is not good. No, I, no, I was. I thought that they were just going to play the Growth Chamber Guardian and adapt it next this past turn. It cost five mana to do that. I thought they were just going to be doing that and going and grabbing another Growth Chamber Guardian and putting it in their hand. I mean, Yurok's not really the answer here. It, it doesn't, yeah, Yurok has Death Touch, so it doesn't matter. The, the problem is my opponent's going to do this. They're going to play the Great Henge, play the Growth Chamber Guardian, draw two cards. This doesn't stop, Yurok doesn't stop that. 
I need one more piece of interaction. Too late, Cavalier of Night. Too late. Need you before. Hmm. Yeah, this is looking really bad now. We need our casualties of war. Yeah, Matthew. Yeah, I had I had two donation decks that that uh, we were tuning earlier. So yeah, that's why the stream started. So. Our stream's kind of late for today. We spent some time tuning the donation decks that for today. Ugh. I don't have enough black sources to play Murderous Rider and Cavalier. I have enough mana, but not enough black sources. Obviously, we, we just need to find casualties of war. This game's over if we don't find it uh, very soon to take out this Great Henge. So while that was a pretty cool looking turn, it doesn't matter at all if we can't kill this Great Henge. So I think I have three casualties and one trophy in the deck right now. But obviously my... It could already be over. They could have another Great Henge. One, two, three, four, five. Casualties. All right, so that's a good start. We're probably going to need another one, though. They probably have more, another Great Henge by now. Oh, I am going to love tearing this place to the ground. Picked the wrong fight. You really did pick the wrong fight. They should have killed the crisis. Be wary of the ground you walk on. This is what I was talking about whenever, whenever y'all were like, "Well, put, you know, you got your rock. Your rock will help save us." This is what I was saying that, our, we need a lot more than you. You know, we had to stop this thing before, but we were unable to.
All right, so artifact, creature. So that should make these Pell Collectors 4-4s, four which is obviously a really big problem. Yep, Finality is the card that we need for sure. I don't know why they didn't play that first, but... Once had some question questionable decisions with sequencing. Okay. I mean, early on in that game, I put... I put the negate down to the bottom instead of the Yurok. That obviously cost us because I didn't have the negate for the Great Henge. Um... Definitely needed that negate for the Great Henge. But, uh, you know, that was like my mulligan decision, you know? Like, I didn't have blue mana at the time besides the Fabled Passage. But I needed, you know, we didn't find other answers for the Great Henge until it was much too late. And I thought we were doing pretty good whenever we Legion's End the two. Paradise Druids. That was that game, right? Yeah. But then they ripped back-to-back -back land drops to, to set them up. We need them to miss on land drops. Uh, they, they did not have a lethal attack there by attacking with everything. I would have gone to two. I would have had to chump block, but then go to two. But, yeah, they would have... I mean, it would have been a good attack for them to attack with everything. A lack of... you. Why do you say rigged trash client? Those have been... You've made three comments in, in chat. One in... October, one in November, now one in December, and that's been the only thing you said each time. I feel pretty strongly about it. I don't think there's anything rigged about the client. You better hope you delay our quest no further. My answers lie in the cold truth. All right, so Grixis reanimate. That's a pretty sweet deck. There's more of those. Lady will, by your side, 
Mm. More royal scions. Hmm. So, if my opponent has Bond or Revival, I'm going to be dead. Not really playing around it. I could have played around it when they had the Draki Seth by holding up the instant speed removal at the swift end, but once they have the agent treachery in here, I'm just going to be dead. I'm not going to have the mana to do anything. Well, casualties is kind of nice. Ow. All right, not that nice. Sometimes your 26 land deck, even with the scry land, can can draw zero lands. It happens. That doesn't do what I want it to do. I don't know. What am I doing with casualties here? What are we doing with casualties here? In the speed removal against the dragon is pretty necessary. Agent of Treachery is just a different, a different animal. So our deck's pretty slow and grindy. We're really good at, at killing stuff and winning a long game. And that's not really what this matchup is about. <clears throat> and so I don't feel great about it. Where are these lands at? Yeah, Ashiok would be great. Um, yeah, this would be a very good Ashiok matchup.
of course, I could have played Leaf Kindred and held up Disdainful Stroke, but with nothing over here right now, I don't think we needed it, needed to necessarily hold up Disdainful way. Stroke. I enjoy the proper application of knowledge. All right, we'll hold it up this turn. <laughs> yeah, it's, this Risen Reef has never hit a land. The two Risen Reefs. We've had five Risen Reef triggers and none of them have hit lands to ramp us so far. See what we got. See if we get like another counter spell or duress. Or none of those. There's a land. We finally got one one land from a res resin reef activation. Ugh. Finally got one. Our bond was forged in battle. <laughs> to know is to triumph. Hmm. Coming back to the shadows for now. All right, so I'm going to hold up Death Sprout slash Murderous Rider. So I think we have this. Bone Sand was not very good, mine was quite good. Thanks, Targaryen. Okay, we're going on to game number three. So Midnight Reaper doesn't seem as good if their main plan is Cry of the Carnarium. It also makes Leafkin Druid sound like a better plan than Paradise Druid.
Yeah, I should just take out the Great Henge. Cruelty does exile Agent of Treachery for good. I guess that's true. We still have six mana creatures. We know they're played a bunch of Cry of the Carnariums. I'll play one Cruelty. Oh, we shouldn't need the ramp from Druid. They were saying we should need the ramp. We shouldn't. <laughs> nah, Reef, Reef isn't allowed to give you a land. We learned that lesson, not allowed. Hmm. I'm playing on Mordigo on turn three. We're naming Agent a Treachery. We're going to... We're going to just, you know, figure out how to beat Dracuseth. You know, we'll have, like, removal for Dracuseth and stuff, but Agent of Treachery can't just really, like, use removal against Agent of Treachery, of course. There's only two Agent of Treacheries. A Niv-Mizzet. So one Niv. Two Niv. Two Niv, three Dracuseth. Doesn't really seem like too much else special. Triple Tone Bound Lich. Land drop. Dragon, we need a land drop. No, bad dragon. We need a land drop. No, I don't I don't really mind if they don't have more haste reanimate as far as like targeting bond. This this is the card that you know is gonna take my stuff. They can just hard cast. Yeah, they can just hard cast stuff without, um... Yay, land. So yeah, they can just hard cast, so... Um... Without the bond. I guess it makes more sense to lead with this thing. Hey, Radical Guru. <laughs> Thanks. What would you change to make white equal in strength to other colors? Um, I don't know if there's like one just small change to make. Uh, well, I mean, the answer is there's not. There's not like a small change to make. It's basically I don't even know if I need to counter that. Like I could have two, three, four, five, six, seven. I 
We'll make this thing as big as Drakis have. It's kind of just a de design philosophy how white doesn't, you know, white has like life gain as its main thing that the other colors don't, you know, as much, you know. And that's just not a very good. That's, you know, a very. Or just. It's not very valuable. And you compare it to. You know, discard with black, counter magic with blue, ramping with green, and versatile burn spells with red. Life gain with white is just the worst out of all those by just a substantial margin. When you think of like the the core of the color. It's turned into a pretty decent, um, hey, 40 gems. It's turned into a pretty decent support color. You know, like blue-white control where you have white for sweepers kind of thing. Esper where, again, you're using white for sweepers and, and uh, versatile removal spells. Um, like Mortify, Othakaya, stuff like that. It just doesn't have a good theme for, like, its threats. Like... All the the threats that it have that it has, like monocolored threats, that have seen a good amount of standard play have just have just kind of been just cards that are just really high on rate and they're just like you know really pushed mythics. That's basically it's that's basically its theme is just pushed mythics, um, with cards like uh, Gideon Ally of Zendikar, History of Benalia. Um, Archangel Avison. Even when you look at like Oketra, God Eternal Oketra. So really its theme is just like push stats basically. Yeah, and then the other part of white, yeah, is white weenie. Uh, little small white creatures. Um, that's then that's the other aspect of white, and that's where you just have to have better aggressive cards that can also you know can, basically for white weenie decks to be pretty good, you need um, you need not only it to be a good aggressive strategy of course, but it has to be good defensively as well. That's where you saw like the um, humans decks with always watching. Um, yeah, like those decks in Thalia's Lieutenant, like those decks not only hit really hard, but they also defended well. You know, like Brimaz, King of Oreskos, was a good card on offense and defense. Because that's, that's basically how mono white aggro, those white weenie decks, that's how they beat other creature decks, is just being good on offense and defense. Thank you so much there for that sub. Uh, Kerberos. Showing the love. Thank you so much there, Kerberos. Well, our hand's looking pretty awesome, especially against whatever my opponent's doing over here. We get to go Great Henge into a whole bunch of Leafkins. Yeah, more, yeah, more white counter spells. That could be fun. More mana type, type cards. Um, it's kind of hard to say no to Hydroid Crisis, but I kind of want this Risen Reef because the Risen Reef is going to just be worth a whole lot of cards with all of this. Hmm, they have one mana Risen Reef. Do, do, do. 
So our next turn we'll have E. We're gonna have a lot of triggers here. Hmm. Guess I should play this thing. Wherever I go, I leave bodies in my wake. Is it possible? They don't have another one drop if I kill the innkeeper. It's kind of risky. I won't forgive this. Uh, no, I do not, Ganaris. Nope. No donation decks for tomorrow. Nope. So, yes, yeah, so I'm... All the slots are open if you'd like a donation deck. Alright, looks like no other 1-1. One, one. Do I get to make this trade? Good. It's definitely the trade I wanted to make. Rude. <laughs> it's not rude, but I just like say that, I guess. Uh, let's see. That's a good card. Am I supposed to play this Hydra Crisis yet? Probably. Come on, lands. We're definitely just going to mill out. Alright, get out of here, Risen Reef. Too many of you. Hmm. Dang. Your ox just gonna, like, kill us. No, there's no Jace in the deck. Do I not have Casualties of War anywhere? This is kind of a problem. Oh no, I'm sorry, Cali Commuter. Yeah, every reef draws a creature, every hench draws a land. I mean, I think this this kind of game here is is an anomaly, as we've been seeing. I, d I don't think we'd necessarily need a Jace in this deck. I don't think that the games would always go like this. Don't dwell on what's about to happen. There we go.
<clears throat> See, we, we can just figure out how to win, you know, without Jace. We'll figure it out. Usually when you get to this point of the game, you can figure out how to win. And, you know, having the three casualties of war certainly helps that. You'll regret that. Yeah, I mean, that's just lethal on board of just killing the Foulmire Knight and then attacking. Okay. So we gotta make sure we don't get beaten down. Let's get another casualties in here. Get these legions ends. Yeah, it's the it's the blue cavalier that goes back to the to the library. Hmm. There's nothing really I want to cut. I would I would like to play these Obnixus cruelties too, but I'm kind of looking at the cards. There's nothing that I really want to cut. Maybe get rid of a Reaper. Um, I mean, I think I like the Tamio to get back casualties. Yeah, like that's that's like the main job of Tamio is rebuy casualties. Find finality seems perfectly reasonable. Go down a murderous rider. I don't know. Murderous rider is pretty important of killing questing beasts. Hey, Ganaris! Okay. First spot tomorrow, Rakdos Sacrifice. Perfect, will do. Guess maybe we'll take out Fine Finality. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Casualties is just going to kind of be our best card here. Expecting them to be playing. Don't need in the opening hand that fast, though. We got more of them. <clears throat> Expecting them to be playing the Great Henge as well. And they probably have Planeswalkers like Vivian. No veil of summer. Hmm. All right, it looks like they got an above average henge over there. Gonna need to find an answer to that. No, drawing a black source. Uh rough. Well, please don't. Uh, I guess they're just going to be able to play Rider. Hey, QQ. So we can Cavalier of Night, kill the Edgewall Innkeeper next turn. 
rough. I guess we're killing the questing beast. Instead. Because we need to kill the questing bees to make it difficult for them to cast the Great Henge, of course. What should you take out to, to add another Bronze on? I don't... Um... I don't remember what's exactly in the sideboard there, Pedro, but yeah, you can definitely play Brontodon. Um, can also play... Thank you. And your card's just gonna draw them cards. Can also play Cinder Vines. Um, in that sideboard as well. Like if you want it, if you want a card to destroy Enchantments, but I understand Brontodon doesn't die to Clarion, so that's good for it. Of course, I'm kind of waiting on those casualties for them to play the Great Henge. Racto sacrifices in the first time slot tomorrow. But but I guess I'd, I'd really... Yeah, if you're saying you're playing a lot of Great Henge, what, what should you take out to add the Bronson on? Uh, I guess the best answer is just something... Something you're not playing too much of. Um, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, but... If there's a card that you're not really playing. Hey, yep, got a haircut today. Oh, I was getting bored anyway. The next set is called um, Theros Beyond Death. Super spooky. Yeah, it's really not super spooky. I guess I don't get the Great Henge with that one, but obviously destroying a land makes it a lot more hard, a lot harder to actually play that card. All right, GGs. All right, we're two and one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and reset Arena after our three matches. We've been uh, <clears throat> streaming on this league for about an hour, but we had it up for a while before that. It's getting a little laggy. Let's go and just reset it. Zerf! What's up? Happy December. <laughs> Their civilization never made it to the henge-making step.
All right, deck's performing better. Um, Smoke, I think you won the deck list. You have to do the exclamation point first. Do exclamation point, then deck. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. Getting back into streaming after the little break that I had there. And I'm not back fully up to streaming shape, but we're getting there. Well, we're going to need some more bricks. If we got all this real estate. Probably should build some more houses. All right, this hand looks slightly better. Hmm. My sleeves are two different colors. Those are green ones. These are blue ones. I like these seven. Kind of like everything here. Yeah, next set should come out mid to late January, like late January. Planes. You don't see planes too often. That's the first land drop. The historical Gari graveyard, it was... Um, oh, that's what we're playing against. It needed some more tuning. Definitely. It was rough around the edges. Um, but, you know, by the end of the video, I liked where our deck was at. You know, like, we were kind of trying out. It was like a first try for using Fauna Shaman like that. Where'd all those lands go? Seriously? Where'd all these lands go? We just saw seven of them last game. <laughs> We've drawn zero lands with all these cards. Is it worth buying the dragon? I mean, it doesn't. it doesn't really do anything. I mean, it does these little things, but like it doesn't like help you win games or anything. Basically, played the Murderous Rider because we we're going to have to go to discard if I didn't. Step out. 
Don't be surprised if we meet again. Well, that was a great draw. The problem is I can't really do anything besides just play Tamiyo. I am Tamiyo. It is What's up, Tamiyo? To meet you. The storied past holds our future. That's not going to work. Let's reduce the battle to shambles. Do, 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 do. Hmm. All right, casualties time. I don't know if I'm supposed to kill the creature or not. I'm probably not. And I get to just draw a card. I don't think I let them draw a card. I guess they can draw a card. find my notes helpful. This seems like a pretty good matchup for us. Having these casualties of wars. This Tamiya has been incredible. Uh, gotta love those casual ties. Of war. Definitely a big fan of casual ties. Hmm. That's rude. I was going to rebuy casual ties. It's, yeah, it's $20 for me to play a donation deck. Great, Dalo. Oh, I never I never pulled up Deckmaster, did I? Forgot to do that. You like the four multis of war? So if I kill Cavalier of Dawn, they do get to get back an enchantment or artifact. Alright, we're just going to be attacking here. I know, I could have tapped this Paradise Druid to play another, but they kind of need some sweepers to stay in it, so I don't really need to extend more. Alright, Deckmaster should be up now. Sorry for not having that up before. Forgot to do that.
All right, we got game one, and it's looking even better for us for games two and three. This looks to be a tough matchup for my opponent with a deck filled with Artifact and Enchantment Hate. I could Ego away Liliana. Liliana's definitely the scariest card. I don't know. I don't know if we need to do that. Hmm. That's the last card we're taking out. Last two cards. Last card. I don't need all the Golgari Queens. No, it's still probably pretty good. Yeah, turkey burgers are definitely delicious. Ooh, we'll take it. It's a good turn to play while I play this watery grave. Yeah, they're they're basically like stuffing because yeah, they had like that whole bunch of stuffing in with them with those burgers. It's like they were like stuffed turkey burgers. They were huge. So we'll start with Midnight Reaper because it's, you know, it's going to die. We draw a card. It'd be nice to be able to play Risen Reef and Leafkin Druid on the same turn. Oh, that's a good play for the opponent. So of course, we'll just have to blow that up. So we need to draw green mana here to be able to play Leafkin plus Risen Reef. That would qualify as green mana. So that was a good turn. What deck are we playing? We're playing uh, Soul Tide Midrange in standard. Just kind of a 
collection of good cards put together. I think they meant to use Swift End and just accidentally cast the wrong part of that card. Pretty sure that's what just happened to there. Man, casualties are so devastating. I just might as well put the Swamp into my hand since I haven't played a land and then I can play it and have Assassin's Trophy available. Yeah, we only need eight more, 18 more turns to kill them with this Risen Reef. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right now for Krasis. Could go bigger. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's Merry Mint. Maybe it's just Golden Egg. Could just be Golden Egg. Merry Mint. Yeah, see the deck list? All you have to do is type exclamation point deck just like that. And that will get you the deck list right there. So now we have three, six, nine. Guess we'll cast this Hydrocrasis one more time. Speaking of nine, they're down to it. Yeah, this does look like my Mardu Enchantment deck that my opponent's playing until I feel bad because this is this is just a really rough matchup for them. But that does look just like the Mardu Enchantment deck that I've played a, few, a couple of times. <laughs> the opponent's in a major crisis right now. Guess that crisis was too big. All right, we're three and one. Yeah, I think so, Delotrius. Yeah, I mean, this, these cards are all just good cards. So, yeah, I think this deck could do pretty good um, in ranked as well. It's not bad. Playing against a breeding pool. Hmm. Oh no. 
All right, kind of wish I would have kept that, to be honest. Hello. Yeah, I did buy the PC parts. Uh, bought them on Monday, on Cyber Monday. Um, the first part came in today. I don't know exactly what part, but the first package came in today. And it looks like all the rest are going to be delivered. Hmm. Let's do some scrying. What we got? Your rock? All right, we're going with this first then. I was probably going to display the Midnight Reaper. But with getting your rock, we're going to be going with that first. It does look like the, like the rest of them, they all say that they're going to be delivered tomorrow or Friday. Except for Amazon split their package up and there's one piece, the case, isn't going to be delivered till Tuesday, they said. They're like, they're like, everything shipped today, but it's all coming tomorrow except for this, except for the case. Even though it's shipped today, it's coming on Tuesday. I'm like... What? What's the deal with that? So unfortunately, it looks like that's not coming till Tuesday. Just hot glue the whole thing to the table. Cases are for cowards. <laughs> That's Amazon crime. Oh no. Double duplicate. You want a historic dinosaur deck? Thanks, Space Penguin. Yeah, that was a really good Cavalier, obviously, to hit the double duplicate. Um, looks like my opponent's going with the Agent of Treachery version, you know, just the blue green ramp. I think that their version is going to be better in this kind of mirror. We have a lot more interaction for other opponents, like especially like um, you know, like the the witches oven decks and stuff. But in just like the the ramp mat mirror, like we're we're playing here, I think their deck's going to be quite a bit better. because of Agent of Treachery, Quasi-Duplicate, and so on. No, this is standard. If I trade there, then they, you know, they get Krasis or Nissa back. So we can go to one with an all-out attack here. I 
Oh, I guess Yurok has the life link too. Can I block there? And chump these? Yeah, I guess I could block there and keep Yurok alive for a turn. Hey, Waffle, thanks for the host. Um, yeah, yeah, I understand the stream's choppy. I'm sorry about that. That's why we were just talking about how we got a new computer and be building that soon. And hopefully that fixes all of the problems. So I have nine mana as well. Oh, that was not good tapping. Now I, I, I guess I cannot play both prison reefs now. I'm good at what I do. And what I do is win. Oh, don't flatter yourself. Yeah, your rock henge is pretty sweet. Did he even use castle? Yep, finally got a haircut. I mean to get one of those for a few weeks and finally got there. Schnapps for two years. Bring in the hype. Thank you so much, Schnapps. Okay. So I, I'm going to be blocking with Yurok finally. We'll block here as well. So I take five, gain seven. Two of their Cavaliers are dead. Just got to worry about this other Cavalier now. Um... I don't know, KY. Okay, the, the Brawl decks did super, super poorly before. That was an unnecessary shock. Which, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 mana. 11. So I can't play both casualties. I can play one casualties. I think we're just going to go with two Risen Reef and kind of see what happens from there. <laughs> the, the lag makes it all the more interesting and suspenseful. You never know how each turn went until 30 seconds later. Obviously, we want our Risen Reef triggers to hit lands. There we go. Keep that on top. Get another land for free.
We just hit three lands in a row. So let's go with the Great Henge drawing here. Good, it was a spell. Now these are going to be lands again. Oh, land. All right. Is there any way to, like, make them shuffle? It's like I can, you know, kill this cavalier. And then, I don't know, make them shuffle somehow. That the third crisis? Yeah, it's the third one. Do I just have to chump lock this cavalier into infinity? I guess we just kill it. Like, how am I doing 23 points of damage? I haven't determined that yet. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What do I got going on in, over here? Four, eight, twelve, fourteen. So I could do casualties, casualties. Then I only have two mana. Oh, but I have these things also. Interesting. Make an excellent informant for my study. The past is never forgotten. All right, twenty one. We're making a dent. We're almost there. Yep, yep, will, yep, will off. Yeah, the Bant value is the deck with charming prints that blinks things in and out. Yep. That's exactly what that is. 
that's what we'll be doing after this and seeing how that goes. Tilt. I protect that which cannot protect itself. Be wary of the ground you walk on. The pro yeah, the pro Charming Prince would be just fine in Abzan Knights. The problem is, is it's not a knight, so it doesn't help your worthy knight and a claim contender. It, you know, it makes, so it kind of makes your knights worse because of that. Um, okay, just creases for three. Like, you know, for drawing three cards. That's not bad. So land, creature, planeswalker... All right, so they're at 21 last turn. Now they're down to 19. We're slowly getting there. So I know I could have used the destroy land to destroy their land that was a creature, but honestly, I just wanted to destroy an extra land because uh, you know we had the we had more removal to destroy the land that was a creature. I just wanted to destroy more lands. Ooh, ticking up. And fine. Going for the mill. Well, there's their Jace. Planeswalker land a creature. It's certainly helped us that my opponent has not played any Agent of Treacheries. No way. Where am I at? Am I at 21 cards? Come on, computer. You can do this. Uh, auto tap. Why are you tapping all of my blue lands all the time? Did I play a land yet? So you did play land already. Um, it was a Ryzen PC. <laughs> yeah, my my computer can sense that I'm getting a new one. Is trying to punish me. <laughs> Probably.
attack. So it doesn't look like they're playing Agent of Treachery. They're, you know, they've they've gone through 37 cards that we've seen. Well, I guess we haven't seen those two. So we've seen 35 cards. But we haven't seen any Agent of Treacheries. It was probably going to die anyway. Uh, 14 cards. Yeah, I don't I don't mind if you share a QQ. <laughs> Struggling. I'm at 10 cards. Still, you know, just taps the blue land. We got millions of green and black lands and three blue. Still have to keep tapping the blue land. This draws three cards. Oh, right, it's going to draw a fourth card because of... Because of your rock. <laughs> yeah, after four casual ties of war, it's de delightfully ironic that Vraska says, an unfortunate casualty. An unfortunate casual tie. Why Yurok over Cavalier? Uh, I don't know. Yurok does cool things. Cavalier doesn't kill this right now. Yeah, Yurok is, is making the Great Hench trigger twice. For each card. So obviously we're just kind of going, we're just drawing the rest of the deck, going all out here to kill them this this turn. If they got like a river's rebuke. That'd be sad. Hey, there's an agent of treachery. They found one. Okay. Yeah, can't kill. My, yeah, can't take my Yurok. I kill him first. So I mean, it's definitely all going to be about casualties of war on our side and Asian and treachery on their side. You know, like whoever is casting more of those cards. So I think I want ego. Because that is like the only thing that I'm scared of, is. Agent of Treachery. Cruelty can be good against Cavalier of Thorns. You know, get it in combat and cast Cruelty. Shrink it down to be an 01 and exile it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they could definitely have mass manipulation. I guess that's another card I can't really beat. Like Agent of Treachery. Yeah, it's a, definitely possible I should be playing more counter spells. I think we have to try to make sure it's a long game. I think we need the acceleration to keep up. Alright, so I'm down in four minutes. Three minutes. No, we're going to want all of our land drops and everything. I could see getting rid of one of the two mana accelerants, though. But I, I think we're going to want our land drops. No, Trinity. No, this is not my new computer. I'm waiting for the parts to come in. All right, well, great card for our, our opponent there. Ah, that was great for them. Wish I would have just passed and swift ended the Risen Reef. Why did I take out that fine finality? Trying to think of which one I want negated. Oh, I, I thought for sure they'd have negate. Oh, they left like the negate up the last turn. <laughs> I know we need we do need some more quasi duplicates, don't we? Yeah, let me write that down. We do need to remake quasi duplicate ooze. That was always a fun deck. So we have six. Crisis for six here. Yeah, exactly. Yep, with the Oko ban, we can play we'll some old school decks again now. It's always an answer. That's a lot of lands over there. Assuming my opponent did not want that many lands. I could be wrong, though. Just assuming. Maybe they want that many lands. I don't know.
I don't know why I didn't attack the rider there. So 6, 10, 12, so 10. Sure. Ooh, the Greyhenge. Bleh. Um, I think I just let him have Krasis for a turn. I don't think... Hey, pockets. Thanks for the sub there, pockets. Alright, our 10th sub of the day. So we gotta finish this game out in the next 13, oh, 13 minutes. So, so far we've only played for 2 minutes here this game. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. That's a good draw. They're back in it. They find, you know, mass manipulation. No, it's, yes, it is. The lags are my computer. I am getting a new computer. But, yes, I understand that the, the lag is, is my computer. Your corpse will make a nice... Oh, the day is yours. All right, bunch of Yurok triggers. I wish I didn't get rid of the Find Finality. That was my very last cut. Obviously, this would be a great time for Find Finality. Just get rid of all these Leafkin Druids that can add so much mana. They didn't do a very good job with their blue mana. They, of course, have the Paradise Druid. They can add blue still, but... So they're at 18 cards. They've actually... For all the card advantage we've had, they've gone through six more cards. Um, we did kill their Jace, but they probably have a Tamiyo. Uh, well, we know they have a Tamiyo. They can get it back. We will not fail. The land shall conquer you. All right, Rex, take care. Well, 
Wait, another leaf can druid? Down to 15 cards. Hey, Rotian, I'm doing great. Thank you so much there. I mean, their, their game plan is definitely just next turn, play Tamiyo, and then replay Jason, play Jason, win. That's how they're going to be winning this game. So I need an instant speed removal spell. For Jace. Which right now I do not have. They discarded Tamiyo? Interesting. That's not going to give me back an instant speed removal spell, is it? I mean, it could. Oh, jeez. I forgot about your rock. All right, negate works. And Murder Strider works. Where am I at? 11. Target creature. No, I never played XCOM 1 or 2. I don't know too much about those. Ugh. Why did I not negate that? That's kind of like the point of what I was trying to do was negate that. And I just didn't. Hmm. I have learned much from my ancestors. I can definitely pay for Mystical Disputes. 
Don't worry about that. They had four dispute. This is game two. So yeah, I'm just trying to win this game. Not really focused on... They mill out this turn and draw a card with all this green mana. Is that a second Jace? Definitely mill out, so they have to have something that says draw a card. For just green mana. We'd be able to get back in the gate. Yeah, they definitely... Yeah, if they would have just played Risen Reef, Risen Reef first, and then played Jace last, and then drawn with Jace last, they would have won. The reason why I negated the, the Nissa, honestly, was because... The only reason why I negated the Nissa was because we actually had uh, less cards in our library than our opponent. So if I let them just play the Nissa and just have the Nissa just make blockers, and as long as they don't play an elemental or draw a card, we're actually going to mill out first. And I was definitely worried about that with what we had. And so that's why I actually that's why I negated the Nissa. I think that one that was like an hour long match. That was a long one. Oh my gosh, we have another one to play? Ugh. Right. We're playing another one. We're in a league. <laughs> We're not doing ranked like we'll just stop after five. Alright, well, we're going to reset Arena before this one. That's, I know that was lagging a bunch for y'all. All right, yeah, it's final boss time. Good call. We haven't we haven't faced the final boss in a long time. Let's get that final boss playlist. I wouldn't mind facing an aggro deck. <laughs> I would not mind facing an aggro deck. Where's Hawkeye? He's he's back there on the couch. Poke, poke. He's back there at the couch. He's he's sitting there looking at me now like, why are you saying my name? Why are you poking me? All right, and he's back to ignoring me. <laughs> yeah, when you donate for a deck, you make sure it takes 27,000 hours to play a league. I know, right, Rex? Yeah, you, yeah the last deck you had for a donation deck, I think, was a three-hour league also. Jogway's there with 300 biddies for the final boss. Thank you so much there, Drug Wizard. Okay. Let's see what we're playing against. I wouldn't mind a good Blood Crypt. Swamp Gutter Bones. That works. I don't necessarily think that we're that we have the best matchup against Aggro, so we could lose. But it shouldn't be an hour-long match. 
<laughs> Thanks, Warheart. Yeah, I need. I definitely needed a new hair. I need to get my hair cut. I've been uh, really slacking on that for a long time. <laughs> hey, everyone out there on Twitch and YouTube. Today marks day three of our donation deck. <laughs> Prison Reef. So obviously the Golgari Queen can destroy the oven. So can casualties. Alright, awesome. Thank you, Aspirin. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need another casual tie. Boo. Mayhem Devil, boo. No real reason to just let them kill my Risen Reef anyway. I'm good at what I do, and what I do is win. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier. I'm going to have my own line of ties. And we're going to call them the casual ties of war. Good. I grow bored with this fight. That's going to be my... People will be like, oh, what brand of tie do you have on? Oh, it's a casual tie of war. Hmm. So I'd rather have Midnight Reaper trade with Mayhem Devil, because then I only lose one life instead of losing two. So that's better for me, but it's also riskier. Because if I play Midnight Reaper, and then they just have removal from Midnight Reaper and then attack me, that's rough. So I guess we'll go this route, or I'm just taking the automatic two. And then they sack a Yara, and a die. Alright, 
right, Legion's End. Cruelty. Another queen. Ceratops wouldn't be the worst. It's not, not a terrible blocker. Midnight Reaper is, of course, coming on out. Um... Risen Reef is not a good blocker here. Can I afford to just take out all the Risen Reefs? Maybe I can. Let's go with this instead. This button. What is going on? Okay. I mean, I, I may just want to cruelty this cauldron familiar right now. Okay, got the casualties. Time to start pressuring him. All right, so I do have, looks like a bounty came up. We do have a bounty that we're gonna be doing after this match. Uh, you know, after we do the, the closeout. So I'd really, really appreciate if y'all stick around for the bounty. Um, looks like we're going to be watching the trailer for The Report. Well, this is an unfortunate turn. I guess I need to exile the priest. Obviously, I need the Paradise Druid to stay alive to be able to cast the Cavalier of Night. Gross. Creature and land. Velian with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Velian. I appreciate that, Valian. Hey, humans04. Alright, that's our 11th sub of the day. 
There's a movie called Knives Out, which looks silly in the preview. Got a really good rating on IMDb. Gonna watch it tonight. All right, let me know. Yeah, let me know how it is, Matthew. Sacrifice. Oh, don't kill my Cavalier of Night. Don't do that. Haste. Ah, stop when it stops. Attack. Yes, I, I finished Fire Emblem twice. I'm playing through it on the third time right now on the most difficult difficulty setting um, called Maddening. I'm not. I'm pretty early in the game, but I'm on the maddening difficulty because you basically get like your um, they call them renown, but you you get to roll over your renown points throughout the game. Uh, when I, like whenever you replay it, so it makes it easier. But still, this maddening maddening difficulty one's pretty tough. All right, so they'll chump the Ceratops. Now they can't make a sacrifice anymore because of Tamio. Knives out is an A plus. Yeah. Yep. If your characters die, then they die. Yeah. So you, you really don't want your characters to die. Because yeah, if they if they die in just like a you know random battle, they're dead for good. You just spend all the time leveling them up, and then they die. Yeah. Uh, there is there is a setting where you can play where it's not like that, where they, you know, come back, you know, like where they, they don't die for good. Well, Ceratops was awesome. Let's run it back. And then... The other night, I also just got Luigi's Mansion 3, and um, I've gone through, like, four floors of that. There's, like, 17 floors. You're in, like, a big spooky hotel. Um, so I'm not too far into the game, but um, that one's definitely been a real fun one, too. Yeah, I, yeah, I play it, so if they if they die, then they die. But there is also, like, a... A, you have like five to ten like mulligans every single battle so like if they die you can like back it up also so if, if something does happen or they die you can back it up well mold of five is not great Yeah, Oko Oko is certainly good enough for modern. I'm probably very good at modern. Um Yeah, usually bring in Unmored Ego in like a, against really slow decks that only have a couple of win conditions to try to kill you. Well, this is going to be an awesome turn for my opponent. Cauldron Familiar Witch's Oven plus Drill Bit Me. That's a great turn. Oh, awesome, Paul. Yeah, yeah, you'll really like it. Fire Emblem's really cool. <laughs> I 
This is the first Fire Emblem that I've ever played. Gotcha. Yeah, and this, the Switch is my only console. Yeah, I actually don't play... So I can't block. If I block, then they just sacrifice... After damage, they sacrifice to kill my Leafkin Druid. I actually haven't played Modern in a really long time. Um, it's been over a year since I've played Modern. I Because I just stream Arena each day. And there's no Modern here on Arena. Oh yeah, I mean, I do have a GameCube, that's true. And I, I have a PS2 also somewhere. Oh man, I think I know where. But I, I guess I have those two, but as far as like the newer systems go. Which is sad, because you know, like, they, they remade a couple of my favorite games ever, like Resident Evil 2 and then Final Fantasy 7. Those are definitely two games on like the original PlayStation I played. Like Those are actually my very two first video games I ever owned, was Final Fantasy VII and Resident Evil 2. Got both of those at the same time, like the same like Christmas. Technically, one was for my brother, one was for me, but it wasn't really ever stated which one was which. But yeah, they made re remade both of those, but not for the Switch on either one, which makes me sad. Oh yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to streaming Pioneer when it makes it to Arena. That's going to be... like I would be surprised if Pioneer is on Arena in the next year, honestly. I think that's a, a really long-term thing. Um, there's just too many cards and everything and too difficult to, to have that be anything uh, anything soon with that. We need to draw this land. Yes, basic land two, that's perfect. All right, destroy a land, a creature, and an artifact. Creature and land. Have to get that witch's oven out of here, obviously. Yeah, they said that was a long-term goal, but I don't, I don't think that's anytime soon. You think it'll be two to three years? I, I could see that. <laughs> Why is this song on the final boss soundtrack? Because it's just cool. Even though it's just a regular old Zelda song. So they can do... Uh, uh, this puts me down to five. They can put me down to four with the Fabled Passage. Now we get to attack and start gaining life over over time. Um You won't see the end coming. Its loss will serve us. Let's go. That Casualties of War was perfect. I think we may be getting the 5-1. It's looking good for defeating the final boss right now. Back up to 16. No, the witch's oven. If only we had some way to kill that that's on the board. Oh wait, we do. Uh. 
All right, so I think we're just going to let that hit. Ooh. Get out of here, oven. What do you think this is? Easy bake oven? This does kind of seem like an easy bake oven. It's pretty easy to bake some food for the kitties. No, I didn't have the ult next turn because wasn't Vraska at, I don't know, something that did an ultimate? Wasn't, yeah, Vraska was at 8, the ultimate's at 9. Um, we lost to, I don't know, I don't remember what we lost to. That was a long time ago. I think we lost our very first match. Yeah, we lost our first match. And then we were down a game in the second one. And then we, like, won the rest of the games. Close enough. We were pretty close to an 0-2 league. Because our second opponent... I remember our second opponent played poorly for us to win... That we probably should not have won that. Yeah, there, our opponent's not playing the Citadel because it costs uh, six mana. You need three three generic mana, so three mana of any color plus three black. And they only ha they have the three black, but they don't have the three generic to go along with it. So they don't have the mana to play it. So that is why they are not playing it. Hmm. Its pain is our gain. They're still at fifteen. I think I've attacked him so many times. We got there. It didn't look good there for a little while. But we got to the casualties of war just in time. Blowing up that witch's oven. Obviously, if we don't draw a land there, we would have lost. But we got there. Oh, no. Not four and two. Five and one. There we go. Oh, I should take get the prize. Ah, get the prize. What's our prize? Golden gems. Golden gems. Yay! All right, five win dream. Okay, so there's soul type mid range. Um, yeah, just a lot of good stuff here. You know, obviously, Casualties of War is just super powerful, and that's kind of what this deck's all about. It's about ramping into Casualties of War, having a lot of um, card advantage and everything like that as well. Um, I honestly just liked liked our list. I liked what we had going on in the sideboard and everything. Um, yeah, just I just liked what we had going on with the deck here. Uh, I guess that's really about all to say here. I guess we should kind of move on to our next video. Yeah, Soul Time Midrange. It's a good one. I, I wish we had another Tamio. Tamio was always pretty good, like in the late game. But I don't know if we really have another slot for another one. But All right. Anyway, so there's Soul Time Midrange. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave comments as well. I'd appreciate both of those. Um, 
And of course, if you're trying the deck out later, you know, let me know how it's going in that comment section over there. How are you doing with Soul Time Midrange here? But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.